Welcome to Canada's podcast. Hello, this is Robert Smigel, and welcome to the BC edition of Canada's podcast, where we talk to the entrepreneurs who are making it happen here in British Columbia. Today's guests are Marty Furst and Jason Elliott. They have been near friends for nearly 20 years and share backgrounds in engineering, manufacturing, and business development. Marty is currently CEO of Perfectly Snug Inc., has proven his entrepreneurial skills in high technology business development for many years in digital imaging products, including cameras that have been used on the space shuttle and International Space Station. Marty retired at 46 years old, but kept bugging his friend Jason to quit his job so that they could start a company together. Eventually, Jason quit his job and together they wrestled to find just the right project. Finally, they founded Perfectly Snug to develop a solution to Jason's hot sleeping problem, the smart topper air conditioning for your bed. Well, Marty and Jason, welcome to Canada's podcast, and thanks for taking the time today to be here for all our listeners. Yeah, thanks for having me. Awesome. Okay, let's get started here. You guys are in two different locations. We've got one in Vancouver and one in Victoria. So um, why don't you give us a little bit of detail about yourself and maybe we can start with Marty, just kind of give us a bit of a background. We kind of got your uh, business background and then we can roll over to Jason. He can tell us a little bit more about himself as well. Sure. Uh, Well, uh, my background is in engineering. I graduated in engineering physics at UBC and uh, uh, worked for years on the technology side, doing engineering engineering. at Vancouver General with medical robotics, and then uh, with Creo Products, which was BC's largest high technology company, and grew with it from 90, I was employee 92, I think, and it grew to uh, 2,000 people, I think, by the time I left. And I left to found a company called Q Imaging, doing digital cameras for the uh, biomedical, primarily biomedical uh, market. And so we sold that to uh, one of our competitors. And uh, a little while later, founded ProSilica Inc., which did machine vision cameras for mostly manufacturing and traffic imaging, that kind of thing. Uh, And by then, you know, really all I was doing was stuff on the business side. Uh, Always had a finger in the engineering, but... uh, now I'm pretty much exclusively on the, on the business side. Awesome. Cool. Okay, Jason? Sure. Like like Marty, I'm an engineer by trade. I graduated from Waterloo uh, Systems Design Engineering a while ago and uh, did a master's at UBC as well. And uh, spent 10 years, my first 10 years in industry, in the fuel cell industry, designing hydrogen-powered uh, forklift engines, which was lots of fun, but learned a lot about how not to do a business <laughs> from a business perspective there. I moved on from there and worked at Kodak and developed optical systems, high precision optical system, systems. It was very challenging work. And uh, then my just before we started Perfectly Snug, I had worked in the capacity of the of uh, many leading the engineering team at uh, Schneider Electric Solar Division. So looking after global solar uh, solar product development, uh, also a very challenging business uh, from margin perspective. And so, you know, Marty had lots of experience on how to do business well. He had seen uh, good margins and good good growth. I, my companies that I ended up working for had always had margin trouble. <laughs> and so that's, that, that's a theme of what, what we're about in Perfectly Snug too. Okay. Not having so- margin trouble. <laughs> Right. So perfectly snug is a topper, a mattress topper, which I guess keeps your body cool. Can you kind of just tell us a little bit more about that and how you're different from anyone else out there? Sure. Yeah, sure. Um, So most of the products on the market are a piece of foam that have some sort of, you know, special property that makes it marginally cooler. So the problem that we're trying to solve is, is people that are too hot to sleep. And there's a lot of people that are hot and it causes them to toss and turn all night. Yeah, you, me too. And that, that's where this came from was, was my issues. I, I basically 
um, sleepless in the summer times and poor sleeper in the winter times. And, uh, and so that, that's, that's where we, uh, where the idea came from. And so all that you can get, and I tried all these solutions on that are available on the market, which are basically foam solutions or some sort of passive, um, system, not system, but passive material that you put on your bed. And they really are a gimmick and they don't really work. Um, so we, you know, one night we, we were sitting around looking for ideas of what to do, uh, for a company. And I was like, Marty, I just can't sleep. I, you know, what I really need is an air conditioned bed like a bed that will take care of my temperature and actively monitor my temperature and, and, and keep me at the right temperature all night. And we were like, Oh, that's a great idea. And then we started looking into it and, you know, lots of people had that issue. So what, what we came up with after, you know, a year or a year and a half of development is a, is a product that's a, here, I got one beside me here. It's a, it's a thin layer that goes on top of the bed. Um, and inside that there's some very compact technology that allows us to use some small fans and, and provide airflow that flows up and underneath a person's body and around them. And then we monitor the body temperature during the night and, and change the amount of cooling that they get as well. It has a heating system inside of it. So it's got the distributed heating uh, element through the bed. And, and so if a person's cold, they can also get a little bit of heating. Um, it's dual zone. So, you know, very, very often one person has a, is hot and another person is typically cold. So each person gets to set it on their own. It's got a remote control uh, in your phone so you can change the settings and there's a number of preferences that you can choose. And, and what we find is it uh, improves people's sleep. And that's, that's really what we're about is, is giving people their life back, uh, improving their mood, improving their health, um, allowing them to sleep when they couldn't sleep before. You know, menopausal women uh, have, found this to be especially fantastic for them and people who, you know, sweat at night, the sweating stops, the hot flashes reduce or disappear. Um, and people are getting more solid sleep at night. Okay. So where do people go buy something like this and, and what's it cost if I want to get one? What's that look like? So we sell online exclusively. So we're e-commerce company. So people find us through internet. Um, and various online forums, and we sell and ship directly from our factory to the consumer. So you can't can't go to Walmart. Can't go to Walmart. No. Okay, it's a specialty product. Okay, now this this looks like it needs some R and D. So uh, how do you guys manage to put together the the capital to put the time and energy resources? Where does that come from? Well, uh, from my previous enterprises. Uh, that uh, were sold. I have a little bit of uh, money, so I've uh, funded uh, most of the company until now. Although we recently added a few shareholders amongst uh, friends, uh, so we're kind of funding it along the way with with the idea that really as quickly as we can, we want the product to be generating. Uh, enough revenue to fund the company and to grow the company. Okay. Now, sleep is a very important uh, aspect to just good health, and entrepreneurs need to be in good health. And because uh, uh, late hours, um, lots of uh, hectic schedules, things like that, those eight hours, six hours uh, are needed. Maybe, Jason, you could help me with this one. I want you to give me a key piece of knowledge or information about your industry that our listeners can learn from that they may not know about now. The mattress industry, the topper industry. But the mattress industry? Yeah. Maybe all the cooling gel yeah, stuff that's not doesn't do anything. Yeah, the, the, it's not really technology. The mattress industry really isn't technology. It's a, it's a, it's a marketing industry. Um, and a lot of the differentiation between our competitors is marketing, you know, how it looks, how it's presented and marketing is powerful and, and companies have grown, uh, the bed and box industry has grown very fast. Um, the direct to consumer, uh, segment of the mattress industry is growing and, and doing very well. And it's based on marketing. Um, we differentiate based on technology and, and that our product is actually different. It does something different than other people, uh, than other people's products. So. Okay. So there's nothing quite unique. Is there fans or there's just something different that makes it uh, that no one else has out there? 
know whether yeah you, there are, there are some kind of uh, vaguely similar products. There's one of our competitors, for instance, cycles uh, temperature controlled water through your bed. So you set the temperature of the water you want, and or the, vaguely the temperature of the bed you want, and uh, it it pumps water through little tubes, kind of thing. Another one of our competitors uses what amounts to a big uh, air dryer that they stick in the end of your bed underneath the covers, and it blows air through your bed. Now we we uh, rejected those approaches for a number of reasons. And really decided what the problem was, you know, and the reason you can't just use a fan or a fan is not that effective is a fan just kind of makes the top of you cold, but you're still hot where you're lying on the mattress. And cooling gel mattresses don't work at, really at all. They initially feel cool or more cool than a regular foam. But the way they work is they suck up heat. So eventually they get really hot and then stay really hot. So even cooling foams don't work. So what we came up with, and the reason is a, is a way to actively cool your body, and it uses air, but the air percolates up right against your, your body under, like right where you're lying. So it's cooling you down exactly where you're getting hot, which is right against the mattress. And then there, because it's airflow, it also vents gently vents uh, air out of you through the blankets, like out through the top of the blankets to take away any excess moisture. So the comfort level is really great because it keeps you just at the right temperature and keeps you kind of that dry, comfy feeling, no, no slimy sheets kind of thing. Um, and the reason we made it a topper is we kind of felt that uh, we didn't want to have to deal with different firmness of different beds. We wanted to just address the problem of uh, temperature. So we made it thin enough that it doesn't really affect the underlying character of the person's bed. So if he likes a firm bed, it stays firm. If he likes a soft bed, it's soft and, uh, and works in all of those situations. So it's, it's quite different than anything out there really. Okay, what's the long-term vision and what will your company look like in the future? Do you see the company expanding into other areas and where beyond Vancouver, BC, or even Canada? Well, it certainly uh, could be a global uh, business. Uh, we've restricted ourselves to North America primarily because of regulatory issues. Betting is, regula is regulated. And that was one of our big challenges, actually, was to get all this technology to pass through regulatory approvals. Um, so to, to sell it all over the world, we'd have to get regulatory approval everywhere that we're going to sell it pretty much, everywhere that cares. Um, so, you know, we, it, it could grow that way. But also we have some plans of... Uh, you know, eventually creating air conditioned uh, mattresses also, but with a, a more of kind of a, maybe a bit of a green angle where one of the materials we're using is highly recyclable, whereas regular foam mattresses are not recyclable. Uh, so we have some ideas about how to create a mattress that's fully recyclable that is also uh, temperature controlled uh, smart bed. And, uh, you know, we think that'd be a, a great product. And the only reason we haven't done it yet is again, this issue of the uh, wide range of, uh, well, that and the, the need for different types of mattresses, different firmnesses, you know, it gets to be quite, complicated in terms of uh, creating just the right or getting the right product to the customer. Uh, whereas with the topper, it'll work with anybody's bed.
Now we've learned a little bit about both you guys and your and your company and your product. Let's talk about doing business in Can or specifically British Columbia. What are the biggest benefits for you in being an entrepreneur in British Columbia? I want you to give us some of the good points about starting a company here, but I also want you to give us some of the tough things or challenges for our listeners so they can keep an eye out for them. Sure. Maybe I'll start and maybe Marty, you can fill in, but uh, you know, the one of the strong things that Vancouver has to offer is the, is the human resource pool. There's a lot of very talented people here. Um, lots of good technical people to, to pull on. On the HR side though, there is a weakness in, um, in manufacturing. Generally manufacturing in Vancouver is tough. It's hard to find labor that's good. That's, uh, inexpensive and uh, and the facilities are expensive so so manufacturing is not an I Vancouver is not an ideal place uh, to, to to be um, but you know our vision is we eventually will grow and have other facilities in other places that are lower cost like southern US uh, to keep shipping down so you know you have to think about the real estate cost of, of Vancouver definitely when you're starting a business um, uh, yeah, that, I, I think that's one of the biggest impacts for us uh, is the real estate cost. Yeah, that's obviously been Vancouver's like rated the most expensive place in North America now. I think last time I heard, so it's getting up there. Um, okay, I want you guys to imagine we're getting back to British Columbia again. Uh, if you were to start all over again and you just moved here to British Columbia, but this time you don't know anyone, knowing what you know now, what would you do, and how would you go about starting all over again as an entrepreneur? Give us some of the things that you do differently that you've learned along the way during this venture. Well, I've definitely learned a few things. You know, it's it's all all of our experience. Both Jason and I have been in product based businesses, not not service based businesses. And you know, I've kind of developed rules of thumb that uh, I think are important and that might be of use to people. And one Jason's already mentioned, the importance of margin. You know, so many people, when they start a business, they kind of think, oh, I just need, you know, twice the cost and I'll be fine. Well, twice the cost and you're, you're basically out of business. Uh, you really need a margin. If you want to grow fast, you need a gross margin, of kind of 80-ish percent, I would say. Uh, you know, to, to handle the growth and to create some room for making a few mistakes. And a lot of companies, especially in BC there and in products, they're started by an engineer or a professor or, and they have great technical uh, uh, interest and they spend all their time developing the product, but uh, don't really consider the marketing and pricing and end of things, which really should be developed at the same time. So I guess the first rule, you know, make sure you can achieve uh, good margins to, to, so that you can discount for reselling and so on, so you can make some mistakes and so that you can grow quickly. Also, you should sell what people are buying if it's your first product, because again, you want to have money to fund the business and you need something to sell to, if you're going to raise money other than through venture capital. Um, you want to move as fast as you can to uh, cash flow positive. So our metric was try to achieve cash flow positive within the first year. Now, it's perfectly snug, we didn't quite achieve that, but uh, that was our goal. Uh, I kind of alluded to this before, but another rule is, you know, develop your marketing and sales engine at the same time you're developing your product. I think many high-tech companies, they spend all their money and time developing the product. And as the product finishes, they go, okay, let's sell it. And they haven't realized that it takes the same amount of time and effort to develop the uh, distribution and sales and advertising. And there's a whole engine that has to get running on the marketing and sales end of things as well. Those are just kind of some of the rules that I would use if I was advising somebody who's just starting a, a product business in BC or anywhere else, really. 
Okay. Do you think entrepreneurs have to be weird or unique in a positive way or are wired differently? Uh, well, uh, yes and no. I think they uh, have to be hard workers, of course, because when you're starting off, you're doing everything. And you have to be fairly widely skilled because you have to do everything. And you usually are short of cash at the beginning. Uh, so you can't afford to hire expertise. So you have to learn it quickly. So you have to be a quick learner. And you have to, uh, you know, be willing to do whatever needs to be done. If you're uh, uh, starting out, you might be sweeping the floors at the same day that you're uh, closing a multi multi million dollar deal. Yeah, exactly. Somebody's okay. got to clean those toilets. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Marty, you're obviously a very well read person by the look of your bookshelves there. So I want to talk a little bit about that. What books are you reading now and why are even audiobooks or podcasts? And can you recommend any books for our listeners who are also entrepreneurs? Uh, I'm reading a number of books at the moment. Uh, I like, uh, I read a fair bit of fiction, actually. Um, I just uh, started reading uh, the, uh, uh, the Virginian. It's an old, old book written in the 1800s uh, about the Old West. It's quite good. And I read, I'm reading the complete works of G.K. Chesterton, who's a fantastic writer, and uh, highly recommend him for just kind of general wisdom and and enjoyment uh you know most of the reading i do on the technical side i really it's as i need it a book that i could really recommend for entrepreneurs uh well startup people thinking of starting a company is the, it's called the pocket mba for entrepreneurship so there is several versions of the Pocket MBA, but there's one that's particularly for entrepreneurship. And it's excellent. It really explains all the kind of steps you go through, explains how to read a, a financial statement, uh, and step-by-step step so that you can even build a, a integrated a spreadsheet, uh, integrated financial statements in a spreadsheet and model your business, which is what we've done. Uh, yeah, that's kind of, I guess those are the big recommendations right now. Jason, what are you reading? <laughs> I, uh, like Marty said, I read on a as needed basis. I'm, uh, I work pretty long hours and uh, don't get a lot of time to read right now. So uh, okay. I generally read um, literature about how to, improve manufacturing processes, but it's, you know, as I said, on an as needed basis, and a lot of it is internet. So okay. I haven't picked up a book in a year, I don't think so. How about any online or offline tools that you guys like to use on a daily basis? Well, we use lots of different software tools. Uh, you know, our online business is, is Shopify based. And then there are a number of apps that we use associated with that. Uh, you know, integrations with Amazon and with uh, uh, QuickBooks and, you know, so there's a, a fairly wide spectrum. We use Klaviyo for email communications. And then, of course, the full suite of, uh, well, we use the Google's uh, business suite for a lot of our stuff, which really helps since we are in a few different locations. To be able to work together, it, uh, it really helps to use that. And it's relatively economical. I don't know what else, Jason. It's, I guess yeah, I, I, I just generally say that you know, our experience from 10 years ago till now, it is so much easier from an IT perspective uh, to start a company. It is really revolutionary um, being able to have an e-commerce business, not having to develop things fundamentally you know, using services like Shopify, um, you know, while it's still kind of painful, it's unbelievably easier than it was 15 years ago or 10 years ago. Um, you know, and collaborative software, we don't have it. We don't have, we all just have laptops. We don't have any 
a server for an engineering company that 10 years ago, you couldn't do that. Even our CAD system, we use Onshape. It's an online cloud-based um, computer-aided design package. It's, uh, it's pretty good. Um, so, you know, things uh, have really uh, revolutionized from a software perspective and a software tools perspective in the last 10 years. It's a big difference. Cool. Okay, we're going to roll into our kind of rapid question answer period. And we got some stuff that uh, just kind of get to know you guys a little bit more beyond uh, Perfectly Snug. If you weren't doing what you do now, what would you like to do for a profession? Well, I think both of us are doing more or less what we like to do. Uh, you know, we enjoy engineering, especially. And if we weren't doing perfectly, I mean, we had a number of ideas before we settled on air conditioned mattress topper. You know, we thought of, we had ideas with uh, water jet cutting machines we, with uh, uh, small engines for range extenders on electric cars. And most of these other ideas we had, we decided were just a little bit too big of scope <laughs> right now. Yeah, so, sounds like the story of Netflix, you guys ever, Read that story about two guys driving driving to work every day in the bare air, come, trying to come up with ideas on a yeah, business. Yeah. And then okay. we, one came up with, uh, why don't we sell CDs out for movies? And they said, oh, that's a terrible idea. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, what kind of a job would you not like to do? Couldn't do it. I, I enjoy a number of different kinds of work. But if I guess at my age, it's any kind of heavy physical work would be harder now than when I was younger. Um, and I have a small family, so any kind of, I really didn't enjoy, when I was working uh, with one company, I was in, in charge of their uh, international business with, with Creo. I was their general manager of international business, which meant I was responsible for all their business outside of North America and Western Europe, which also meant I was on the plane all the time. And I, while it was in retrospect, I'm glad I visited all those places and had that experience. That was not a fun job. And I was away from home all the time. So I don't think I'd like a job away from home all the and time. Jason? What would you For me, give? it's not necessarily the job. I think part of being an entrepreneur is you have to enjoy work you have to enjoy doing whatever is before you and and i you know so i don't mind what i'm doing i definitely enjoy designing things the most but the thing i would not want to do is is uh is work with people uh that are not constructive on a daily basis you know people who are are uh, hard to work with from a not not really interested in getting things done more interested in politics of the company or something like that it's, so it's more about who I'd work with than what I would do. Um, okay. It makes the biggest impact, yeah. Okay. Do you guys have any advice that you may have received that you can pass on to entrepreneurs throughout Canada? Well, for, uh, there's lots of, uh, <laughs> lots of advice. Uh, and some of that I already mentioned in terms of some startup guidelines. But, uh, you know, most especially in a startup situation, it's very hard to do it all by yourself. And so you got to do it with somebody. And so you got to, you got to uh, pick some partners. It's, it's much easier to do this with a few people than none or just yourself. And so you got to pick your partners carefully because it's going to be a stressful time uh, growing a small company and you need to have people that are all on the same page in terms of uh, worldview and uh, uh, goals and commitment. And so, you know, that's, that's a big part of the reason why Jason and I are working together. Awesome. Okay, we're going to wrap things up. How can our listeners get hold of you guys? And is there anything you'd like to add before you leave us today? Well, the best way to get a hold of us is through our website at perfectlysnug.com. Uh, just the way it sounds, perfectlysnug.com. And through our contact page, that's probably the easiest way. Okay. And if you're a 
hot sleeper. You definitely want to get in touch with these two guys. I'm sure they can help you a lot. You certainly uh, can. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. Okay, guys, well, thanks for coming on the show. I've learned a lot about you, and I'm sure our listeners have as well. Really? Uh, awesome. Okay, and also to our lit. And to all, all our listeners listening to this, thanks for listening to Canada's podcast. Like, comment, and subscribe to all our channels to get the latest podcasts from entrepreneurs across Canada, much like Marty and Jason. And we'll see you guys next time.